Hi everyone, Charles here for ML New Papers. Earlier this month, a team of applied researchers affiliated with Google DeepMind and New York University published a paper whose main result is an algorithm which can solve difficult math problems. What? What did I just say? Is that even possible? Okay everyone, time to find out. So for the new joiners, my name is Charles, I am a PhD student in machine learning, and on this channel I share with you my take on the most recent and most aspiring research papers that I come across in my research life in a hopefully nice and approachable way. And today, we are going to explore a purely practical paper on neural symbolic learning, which has made waves recently. Today's paper is titled Solving Olympiad Geometry Without Human Demonstrations. It has been written by Trio Trin, Yu Huai Wu, Kuo Kuo, Ho Ho and Tang Luong, and was published earlier this month in mid-January 2024 in Nature. In today's video, I'll first present the new algorithm Alpha Geometry and what it can and cannot do. Next, we will see how it works based on symbolic learning. Finally, we will look at its impressive performance in practice, and I will give you my humble take on that work, its limitations and potential improvements. Let's jump in. Alpha Geometry, what it can and cannot do. To this algorithm, Alpha Geometry has been designed to solve geometry problems from the International Math Olympiads, which is arguably one of the most difficult math competitions for high schoolers. We're talking here about geometry problems similar to what you may have encountered in high school, but at a much higher level of difficulty. The average solution is a proof of 50 steps and most of the time requires to draw additional lines, circles and points called auxiliary constructions. So, what can today's algorithm, Alpha Geometry, do? It's quite simple. It can solve pure Euclidean 2D geometry problems and prove results such as that show that two lines are parallel or show equalities between distance ratios, for example. It can also solve difficult problems which require auxiliary constructions. Besides, the solutions it produces are easy to interpret in contrast to previous existing works. And finally, when a geometry problem has several solutions, it can select the shortest one among them, which is a great advantage from the perspective of mathematical elegance and clarity. On the other hand, alpha geometry only works for Euclidean plane geometry problems. It does not work for other areas of math like algebra or calculus. Furthermore, some areas of geometry like combinatorial geometry or geometric inequalities are not covered by the algorithm. Before we jump into the heart of this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the notification bell. That really helps the channel. Thank you. Now, how does alpha geometry work? Symbolic learning, the central piece to the puzzle. So formally, a math problem gives a set of hypotheses from which you are supposed to draw a conclusion. Similarly to a human, symbolic learning aims at making deductions from the hypotheses to reach the desired conclusion. The symbolic learning procedure considered in this today's paper uses two methods to make deductions. The first one is called deductive database. Some previous work listed manually 75 deduction rules and the algorithm simply applies them exhaustively. One example of rule is if AB and CD are parallel and CD is perpendicular to EF, then AB is perpendicular to EF. This method is very direct and interpretable to say the least, but not enough for our purposes. This is why we need a second method, called algebraic rules. In geometry, most equalities can be rewritten in one of those three forms, there. For example, say you want to show that two length ratios, aw divided by bx and cy divided by dz are equal. A smart way to write this as above is to take the log and the equation can be written in the desired form, for the following variables a, b, c and d. Then we translate all the problem hypotheses and we obtain a huge linear system of equations with many variables a1, c1, a2, and so on. Now, since each line of a system is equal to zero, the solutions of our system of equations do not change if we perform any of the following three operations. Number one, invert two lines of a system. Number two, multiply one line by constant lambda different from zero. And number three, add a line to another one. By performing many times the above operations, this is called Gaussian elimination, the algorithm will check all of the possible equalities, those ones, for all the variables a, b, c, d of the problem exhaustively, or should I say exhaustingly. The equalities, which are true, then become deductions. We now have two symbolic learning methods 
to make deductions from a set of hypotheses. Deductive database and algebraic rules. The symbolic machine in this paper first applies deductive database to the set of hypotheses and makes some deductions. It then adds those deductions to the set of hypotheses and then applies algebraic rules. And it makes deductions. It next adds them to the set of hypotheses and applies deductive database and so on until it does not come up with any more deductions. The symbolic learning procedure is at the heart of alpha geometry. Alpha geometry, how it works, is a big picture. So overall, alpha geometry is composed of two elements, a symbolic machine that we just described and a transformer-based large language model. When given a problem to solve, that is a set of hypotheses and a conclusion to prove, alpha geometry first uses the symbolic machine on the set of hypotheses and makes deductions. If it didn't reach the desired conclusion, then it will use the large language model to generate an auxiliary construction. In other words, it will draw an additional point, line or circle, which becomes a new hypothesis in our set of hypotheses. Then it will use a symbolic machine on the new larger set of hypotheses and make deductions. If it still didn't reach the desired conclusion, it will use the large language model again to generate an auxiliary construction and so on until the problem is solved. Let's take the following problem as an example. Given a triangle ABC such that AB is equal to AC, show that the angles ABC and ACB are equal. The figure will evolve on the left of a screen and at the same time will follow the box filled with color, which follows the reasoning of alpha geometry. Starting from the hypothesis AB is equal to AC in the red box, alpha geometry will first run the symbolic machine to make deductions in the blue deduction box. Unfortunately, the deductions do not contain the desired conclusion, so alpha geometry will run the large language model which will construct the midpoint D of a segment BC on the figure on the left. That will become a new hypothesis BD is equal to CD in the red box. And then alpha geometry will run again the symbolic machine on the new set of hypotheses. It will then make various deductions and finally reach the desired conclusion. Now, the only question left is, how does the large language model work? This is based on a deep learning architecture called a transformer, which is omnipresent nowadays and not specific to this problem. So instead, I will focus on how to train the model such that it can generate auxiliary constructions. Training the large language model. An important feature of alpha geometry is that it does not require human-made examples. Instead, it randomly samples a set of hypotheses from an exhaustive list and it uses the symbolic machine to make deductions, thus artificially generating triplets, hypotheses, proof deduction, that it can learn from. For example, assume that alpha geometry has sampled a triangle ABC such that AB is equal to AC and the midpoint D of the segment BC. Then, using the symbolic engine, alpha geometry will deduce that the angles ABC and ACB are equal. Therefore, it will learn that one can deduce the blue deduction from the red hypothesis. All right, but that still doesn't say how the model learns how to make auxiliary constructions. And here is the trick. Let's look back at our previous example. In the set of hypotheses, the midpoint D does not appear in the conclusion statement. So we can move it from the hypothesis to the proof body. And voila, the large language model has an example on how to make a proof with an auxiliary construction. Before we move on to the practical performance of alpha geometry, let me just mention that every deduction step is coupled with a traceback method, which plays a key role in finding the shortest possible proof. If you're interested, I put a link to the paper in the description down below. Alpha geometry, it's practical performance. Alpha geometry was trained on 100 million geometry problems, sometimes involving auxiliary constructions, which were all generated artificially with process described before. It has then been tested on the 30 latest geometry problems of the International Math Olympiads, and it managed to solve 25 of them, accounting for a total score of around 83%. As an attempt of comparison, at this competition, bronze, silver and gold medalists have average scores of 64, 76 and 86% respectively, placing the algorithm above the silver and right below the gold. This result is yet to be nuanced as the algorithm is only evaluated on geometry problems, while the candidates are evaluated on problems in any area of mathematics. We should further note that Euclidean plane geometry problems are often considered by some as the easier problems in the competition. 
That's why I personally think that it would have been a better point of comparison to only consider the candidate scores on the geometry problems. Yet, Alpha Geometry was also tested on a much larger set of 231 problems of varying difficulty and landed an impressive score of 98.7%. Alpha Geometry, what's next? Now, what to think about Alpha Geometry? First, its experimental results are undeniably impressive. It can solve geometry problems that very few humans can solve. It is all the more impressive since it does not require any human teaching except for 75 rules of a deductive database. So literally, it does not need us to become great at geometry. However, while impressive, Alpha Geometry only works for Euclidean plane geometry problems whose solutions may be very difficult, but at the same time, more methodical than other areas of math. First, try to reach the conclusion from the hypothesis. If you can't, draw additional points and lines and try to reach the conclusion again, and so on. And this is exactly what Alpha Geometry does. Then, it seems difficult to apply Alpha Geometry to every single area of math, and there is definitely more work to turn Alpha Geometry into Alpha Mathematics. It is yet worth mentioning that there are other algorithms which can solve more general math problems, but whose practical performance is yet to be improved. Finally, can we expect Alpha Geometry to reach a better score in the future, and how would we do it? My intuition is that, in the case of humans, the more theorems you know, the better you will perform, and as a result, I would expect the same from Alpha Geometry, which however reinvents the wheel every time by making a huge number of trivial deductions instead of skipping proof steps and making more advanced ones. So I'm wondering what would happen if we dynamically added deduction rules during the training phase by including all or part of the theorems discovered along the way. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Do you have any idea on how to increase the performance of Alpha Geometry? Let me know in the comment section down below. At the end of the day, symbolic learning is an interpretable process, so your high-level ideas could likely become a future breakthrough. But alright everyone, that was my take on this new algorithm which can solve geometry problems. To this paper was very applied and not so theoretical, but I still try to give an intuition on how alpha geometry works and how algorithms can learn how to solve geometry problems. Do you enjoy this type of videos and should I make more of them in the future if I see such papers come out in the news? Please let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your feedback. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of the next video. I'll upload new content every week, so stay tuned. Thank you again so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.